Hi class, it's Miss Wucheroni and Miss Haller, and we're here today to talk to you about water. We just learned about chemistry, the basics, about atoms and atomic structure. We talked about ions and we talked about bonds. And now we need to apply that to learn about water and pH, which is essential to all living things. Water makes up about 60 plus 60% of your weight, and it's incredibly important in all living organisms for a host of reasons you could see listed down the side. Anything from helping you maintain your body temperature to absorbing nutrients. And if you look at the picture on the other side, you could see that based on age, your water content varies from um, 50% to 85, depending. And also, every single organ in your body has a certain composition of water that's incredibly important that it maintains that. So let's talk about why water is so special. So first of all, let's look at the molecular structure of water. As you may know, water's formula is H2O, so it's made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen. And one of the things that we learned about in the last chapter was that there's a type of bond called a covalent bond. And covalent bond is when atoms share electrons. And that's exactly what the oxygen and the hydrogens are going to do in water. Each atom needs to get a full valence shell of electrons, in this case hydrogen with two and oxygen with eight. And in order to do that, you could see they are sharing their electrons right here and right here. So these are polar covalent bonds. And polar means that they are sharing those electrons unequally. So one of the atoms, oxygen, is stronger tugging the electrons towards that end. And so they're pulling really hard on the electrons, kind of like a tug of war. So all the electrons end up around this oxygen. And because electrons are negatively charged, it's going to have a slightly negative end. And the closest thing to the ends on the opposite side is this positive proton. So there's a positive, slight positive charge on both the hydrogens. So when we have opposite ends or different poles, it is a polar covalent bond and water is a polar molecule. Make sure that you draw this on your notes paper and fill in all the electrons, protons, and neutrons and the polar covalent bond before you move on. So reminding you that water is a polar molecule leads us right into the fact that polar molecules like water can easily form hydrogen bonds, which is one of the attractions that we talked about. A hydrogen bond is when the slightly positive end, that's a hydrogen, is attracted to the slightly negative end of a different molecule, in this case, another water molecule. So we have water hydrogen bonding to other water molecules. And so this bond holding them together, opposites attract, is a hydrogen bond. And this happens all the time, tons of times. And it's all because water's polar. It's like a little magnet where we have a slightly negative side and we have slightly positive sides. So it's important that you understand that hydrogen bonds form easily with water. And that's gonna lead us to some of its special properties. One of these properties of water that is due to hydrogen bonding is called cohesion. It is water molecules attracting to other water molecules. You saw this on the last slide with Ms. Mooch was talking about positive hydrogen being attracted to negative oxygen, forming that bond in between there. That causes things that we have all experienced in our life. It's each one of these water molecules attracts to the ones next to it and the ones next to it. You can see all the arrows in here indicating a ton of hydrogen bonds. They're weak, so they're breaking and reforming, but there's so many of them that it adds up to being strong. If you ever did the drops on a penny experiment, you know 40 something drops will go on here and make this big bubble before it actually overflows. That is because of cohesion causing surface tension. Also for the water strider and the paper clip, both of these things are more dense than water and should sink. They don't because their weight is spread out over so many thousands of hydrogen bonds that it actually holds them up. So that is cohesion, water attracting to water. The next one is adhesion. Adhesion is still water, but this time instead of attracting to another water molecule, it's attracting to some other kind of molecule. It's still due to hydrogen bonding, still because there's charges around, but this time it's water to other things. All right, so in our little cute diagram up here, it's water attracting to a leaf. 
in some of these ones, it's water attracting to glass. Glass has a charge, water has a charge, causes hydrogen bonding between them. If you have ever tried to pour any water out of any kind of a container, which we all have, you know that the water tends to stick and dribble down the side. That is because of hydrogen bonding. The water is attracted to the charged particles that make up your cup or your plastic bottle or whatever it is, so they tend to go over there. The same thing is true if you are measuring water in any kind of uh, scientific instrument here. This would be showing a meniscus. What happens right here is this. The water molecules, each of these is attracted to the actual side of the container and it makes it climb up a little bit at the edges. The true water value is at the bottom, but that's what a meniscus is all about, is adhesion. Same thing is true in plants, not just in other non-living things, but in living things this is important as well because water is attracted to the tubes inside of plants and it allows the water to move from the roots all the way up to the top of the plants. There's other things involved there as well, but mostly it's cohesion and adhesion. This is a thing that's called capillary action. Capillary action means that if you have tiny or small glass tubes, the water will be attracted to the tubing itself and will pull itself up there. You don't have to suck it up into there. It goes on its own because of adhesion. Another property of water is dissociation or ionization. This means that water molecules will break apart. Here we have a water molecule. You know what a water molecule looks like already, H2O. This is a covalent bond. You know that. So they're sharing two electrons here. It's polar covalent, so they're closer to the oxygen, but the, the hydrogen right here is sharing with them. Sometimes though, it will ionize, which means that the, the hydrogen will actually break off, but it leaves behind its electrons. So the hydrogen leaves and it has a positive charge because all it is is a proton. It left behind its electron, which gives this molecule, whose name is hydroxide, a negative charge. You have this picture on your notes. You need to label it and fill it out. This is a water molecule, which is H2O. When it breaks apart or ionizes, we have what is called a hydroxide. It's a hydrogen and an oxygen together. And ion means it has a charge, OH minus. And then the other thing that broke off is called a hydrogen ion. It's not just a hydrogen because it has a charge here, so it's H plus. That's a hydrogen ion. This is happening all the time in any body of water or any glass of water in your body and this is not a problem for your body because this water is still pure neutral we're talking about the ph scale and it means that there are equal amounts of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion so when one water one molecule of water breaks apart it makes one hydroxide ion and one hydrogen ion so over here is a picture showing here's a bunch of water one of the waters broke apart this is not harmful to you because it still has equal amounts of the two things. That's not always the case though, so we're gonna talk about that next. So water dissociates into hydrogen H plus and hydroxide OH negative ions. And in water, they're always equal, but they're not always equal for every single solution or every, every single substance that there is. And so when pH actually stands for parts hydrogen and that's because we're measuring the parts or the amount of hydrogen ions in something whether it has a lot or not so much so that's where ph comes from it's always a lowercase p and it's always a capital h because a capital h stands for hydrogen which always has to be capitalized and the ph scale that measures this runs from 0 to 14 and it's going to compare how much hydrogen ion and hydroxide ions are in a solution. And so if you take the pH of your blood, it should be between 7.35 and 7.45 on the pH scale. And if it's not, you die. And so you have chemicals in your body that will actually help maintain this range. And when they don't work, that's, that's bad news too. Yeah. So looking at the pH scale at the bottom here, you could see it runs from zero to 14 and in the seven, in, seven's in the middle, of course. And there's two terms that help us tell us what pH it is, actually three terms. There could be acids, there could be bases, or it could be neutral. 
So anything that is below seven on the pH scale is considered an acid or it's acidic. And what that means is that it has a lot more H plus than OH negative. So it has a high concentration of H plus. If it is on the seven to 14 side or above seven, we call these things bases or that's basic. And that just means it has a lot of hydroxide ions. And if it's right in the center at seven, we call this neutral, and it means that there's equal amounts of both, just like water. So if we look at these pictures on the side, let's compare H plus and OH negative. This first picture, if you count them up, there's more hydrogen ions, so that is why it is acidic. In the middle picture, there are equal amounts of them, so that is why this is neutral. And in the bottom one, there's more the red, and the, the red ones, those are OH negatives. And if you, there's more of those, it is a basic solution. And that's the basics on pH. Fun. So this scale is on your notes. Please make sure that you fill in anything missing that's not on your paper. So we have 0 to 14. That's the pH scale. And right in the center is neutral, which is written on yours. What that means is it's equal amounts of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. H plus and OH negative are equal in amount. An example would be water, of course. If we're above seven, that means it's a ba it's basic. So the closer to 14 we get, the more basic it becomes. And so these are your bases. And that just means that you have more hydroxide ions when you compare it to hydrogen ions. And then on the other end, if it's below seven, these are acids. And what that means is that there's more hydrogen ions when compared to hydroxide ions. This is the scale again, but it's actually showing a lot of common substances that you've probably heard about or use in your daily life. Um, so we have Battery acid down here at zero. Lemon juice, pop, vinegar, coffee. On the top end, you can see a lot of cleaning supplies that are very basic. And the closer to 14 you get and the closer to zero you get, the more dangerous they are. And so that just means that they have a whole lot of H plus acid or a whole lot of OH negative, very basic. Okay, so let's do a little bit of practice. We're going to decide whether each of these solutions is an acid or a base. So let's start here on this side. So you can see, whoa, lots of hydrogen ions, only one hydroxide ion. That gives it a low pH. So do we call something that's a low pH an acid or a base? Hopefully you said it. <laughs> you better know. <laughs> Hopefully you said acid. This would be acidic. This side has a lot more hydroxide ions and only one hydrogen ion here. Lots of OH negative makes it have a high pH. Higher on the pH scale, above seven, makes it a base, basic. Hopefully you said that, All right? And down here, we have another representation. This is showing a large amount of hydrogen ions in acidic solutions. Neutral solutions have equal amounts of the two ions. And then an alkali, which is another name for basic solution, you have a lot more hydroxide ions. So alkaline and basic are the same thing? Yes. The pictures on the side are similar to one that we already looked at, but here they're just showing the ions written out. So here, a bunch of hydrogen ions, only a couple hydroxide ions makes us an acid. So the pH numbers here, hopefully you can say, would be somewhere between zero and up to seven, not including seven. Seven is neutral. This is where there are equal amounts of the two ions. And then down here, this one is basic or alkaline, has a lot of hydroxide ions, only a couple hydrogen ions, which means that this is going to be above seven, somewhere between seven and 14. We don't want you to get the idea that as you go up and down the pH scale, you're just adding one or two extra hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions. It's actually a lot more than that. The pH scale is what we call exponential which means that for each number you jump on the pH scale, you're getting 10 times more basic or 10 times more acidic. So going from a pH of seven to a pH of six is actually 10 times more acidic. And then, so if you go to five, it's 10 times more acidic. So from 
seven all the way to five is actually a hundred times more acidic. Makes a big difference. These numbers are not small and indifferent. They really matter. That's what this is showing down here. If you look at a pH of seven and you say it has one, a value of one, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times. So a pH of one is in reality a million times more acidic than something that is a pH of seven. It's a big deal. So it has 10 times more hydrogen ions. In comparison to hydroxide ions. And then if we go on the basic side, oh, that would side. mean it would have 10 times less hydrox hydrogen ions. And or 10, 10 times, times more. more hydroxide ions, yes. Of course, remember that's where we're going here. Hydroxide ions on that end, hydrogen ion on that end. Make sure you've written that on your notes paper. So, why does pH even matter? Why are we even talking about this in a biology course? And that's because for you and me and actually all living things, we wouldn't be here if our bodies could not maintain certain pHs all the time. I mentioned that your blood has to stay between 7.35 and 7.45 or else you're dead. So wouldn't you think that's pretty important that you have a way to maintain pH? And so if you look at this picture, you could see that there's the blood right there. So here's blood. There's actually different types of blood, which we don't need to get into, but it's between 7.35 and 7.45. But your stomach over here, your stomach juice, your gastric stomach acid, that's down by like two. And then, but your liver functions at a 7.2, but your pancreas is around eight. Your urine has a wider range. And so hopefully you see that each organ in our body functions best at a different pH. We call that homeostasis. And so that means our bodies have to have ways to maintain these numbers. And the, we make chemicals naturally called buffers that do this for us. And there's so many different types of buffers, but their jobs are to maintain the pH that your body needs to be at. So your pancreas makes buffers to maintain an 8.0, whereas your stomach makes buffers to maintain a 2 pH, et cetera. And if they're, those buffers aren't working, something will go wrong. You'll get a disease, a disorder, you'll die, something bad. So thank goodness for buffers. And that's why pH is important. And we hope that was helpful and you learned something. See you in the next video. Bye.